daughter of Bob and Julie Stunkel, and I'm a visiting Rotarian from the Fridley Columbia Heights Club in Minnesota. Nice to have you. And I see another visiting Rotarian over here. I'm Suzanne Carter from the Rotary Club of Hall, ACT, uh, near the ca capital of Canberra. Near the capital of? Canberra. Canberra. Which is the capital of Australia. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and you barely count as a visiting Rotarian, but Mary Jean? Yes. I'm Mary Jean Ewing. I'm a member of the Boulder Flatirons Club, and I bring to you today information, the perfect pitch on perfect peaches. Please purchase. It all sounds together. Thank you. Are there any guests of Rotarians? Will you please stand? Okay. Right here first. Hi. And, and will you please face the camera while you... I got it. You got it? Hi, this is my friend Sarah Ross. She is um, a family law attorney with Ross Law Firm. She also practices cannabis business law with Feldman and Nagel, and I know her from the Highland City Club, for all those of you who are part of that. Sarah's my friend. <laughs> Over here, and Crystal, you're hardly a visiting Rotarian. It's so good to see you. <laughs> you have a guest, right? Okay, Chris, Crystal Lopez, um, wife of Henry Lopez. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and coming over here to Nathan. This is my guest, Susie. She is a professional basketball player. Uh, actually, she's visiting from Ohio. No, she's not a basketball player. She's visiting from Ohio, and this is her second time at Rotary. And how many of you have tasted Nathan's olive oil? Yes. It's in 57 Safeway stores, so don't forget him or it. Okay. So we have a guest, Carrie McElvain who's interested in joining our club, carries in marketing with the healthcare industry and travels all over Northern Colorado taking care of people. Please welcome Carrie to the club. And next in line here. Hi, I have two guests today, Linda Davidson. This is her second visit to Rotary and she is in process of completing her application form. And her mother was a lifetime Rotarian who's been after her for many years to join. So we finally got her. And she is a realtor with um, Hathaway Bookshire. And then I also have David Mabel. This is his first time here. He's very interested in joining. Um, he is an entrepreneur who started a number of businesses. And we call him David Tree because he buys trees and plants them all over town for free, and uh, he's going to be a part of Rotary to plant trees. Thank you so much. Aaron? Okay. okay. Danny, are you, are you next to somebody? Oh, I do have a guest. Danny? My guest today is Chelsea, and I can't pronounce her last name, so she's going to help me. Salam Alir. And she's, this is her second visit, and she is our new Boy Scout girl. So hopefully meet her and welcome her when she becomes a Rotarian. Hi, I have with me my daughter, Lucy. This is her first meeting, and uh, she is going to be entering sixth grade this fall at Westlake Middle School in Broomfield, which is where we live. Um, and she is enjoying this summer uh, learning guitar and being my assistant when I'm working from home. John. 
So I'd like to introduce Karen Barella. Karen is uh, also looking at membership and uh, inspecting all of us, so behave, but um, is involved in her business uh, helps seniors uh, move into uh, uh, assisted living and downsize. <laughs> Um, hello, my guest today is Matthew Bearclaw. Uh, Matthew and I have been known, have known each other for a couple of years, and Matthew has a very uh, interesting past. He was a very avid cyclist. I call him semi-professional, cycled all over the world, as an accomplished chef, and the co-founder of Apogee, which is a software company that helps firms de uh, analyze data to determine how to better market and brand their products. My guest is... Kimberly Fells, and we connected today on the phone. She has been interested in visiting this club. Uh, Bob Slider, our past district governor, had suggested she come here. So welcome, Kimberly, and she's with Remax, and we hope that you say this is a, a place to be on a Friday and you want to be part of our membership. So welcome. It's real good so far. <laughs> Julie Stunkel, my wife, uh, is eager to be part of our 100th year as a club. And uh, for Julie and Kristen and I, the evening lays before us with the Colorado Music Festival. <laughs> okay. okay, we're really excited today. We have. Um, our uh, resident scholarship recipients here with us, and we wanted to recognize them and, and celebrate this achievement. Um, for those of you who um, may not know what the resident scholarship uh, is, it's a scholarship that um, you guys fund um, through the raffle and through several of our other fundraisers throughout the year and allows us to give um, pretty sizable scholarship amounts to very deserving, deserving students in, that go to Boulder Area High Schools. Um, it's called a resident scholarship because the students who are awarded um, the scholarship uh, are going to in-state universities or colleges. Um, and this year, we awarded seven scholarships. We normally have anywhere between five and ten that we give out. Um, and they're, it's based on academic achievement, but also a very personal, compelling story that they tell. Um, and we'd like to recognize them today. I'd also, first before I um, allow them to introduce themselves, like to recognize our committee. Um, my co-chair is Brad Weasley, who couldn't be with us here today. Um, we also have uh, Pam Malsbender, Ruth Ir uh, Rich Irvin, and Ruth backs him up. Um, Sue Lonsbury, Rob Rutherford, Janet Beardsley, and Chet Winter. So without this committee, we uh, really couldn't pull this off. Um, so today we have four of our seven scholarship recipients. Um, and the three others that aren't here are Preston Brantmeyer, Max Blanco, and Leora Green. But right now I'm going to allow them just to say a few words about who they are. Hi, I'm Emma, and I'm here today with my dad, Jim. <laughs> and uh, I just graduated from Centaurus High School, and I plan on attending Colorado College for my college career. And I don't really know yet what I want to study yet. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Adam Rain. This is my guest, my mom. I went to Fairview High School here in Boulder. Uh, I'm going to CSU in Fort Collins, and uh, I'm going to be studying mechanical engineering. I'm honored to be here today. Hi, my name's Jacqueline. I graduated from Boulder High School. Um, in the fall, I will be attending CU Boulder, and I will be studying integrative physiology. I'm Manuel. I graduated uh, from Boulder High. I'm, you know, I'll be attending CU Boulder, and I'll also be doing computer science and hopefully mechanical engineering, too. Thank you. Over here. 
Hi, it is um, my honor today to introduce um, our out, two of our outbound Rotary Youth Exchange students, of which one is my daughter, Sydney. And, um, and I'm going to actually just let them tell you a little bit about themselves and where they're going. Hi, I'm Sydney, and I'm going to Sweden in just about 10 days. Um, and I want to thank you all for this opportunity. Hi. Oh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Cecily Yer, and I'll be spending my year in the country of France, and I leave August 27th. Have you, have you missed any other guests? Or, okay. Does anybody know how many years this, this club has been in existence? How many? 100. And our president has a new thing for us to do this whole year to celebrate the 100th anniversary. And um, Danny and I are each going to mention one of the 100 ways that you can be a fantastic Boulder Rotary Club Rotarian. One is, how many of you have participate in a committee? Any committee, any committee. Not bad. How many of you know how many committees there are? Six, 62 or 63. So no matter who you are and what your uh, interests are, there is some committee that will be just right for you. So in this next year, uh, our president would like each of you to be able to say, yes, I belong to at least one committee. And Danny? And I have something else to ask you, but Jean hasn't given me my cheat sheet. Uh, to Where is it? dollars in the year. Hundred dollars? Yeah. Is okay, it? everybody. Minimum <laughs> threshold: hundred dollars per year donated. Yeah, and community service. In com and community. for community service. Yes. Wasn't that pretty good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you told me you knew it what all. What a duo! <laughs> what yeah. a team! Okay, great, thank you. Uh, thank you, Gene, and thank you, Danny. Um, before, we, before I hand this over to Lena, um, you know, this is my first meeting I'm running all by myself, and life is a part of uh, learning and laughing and stuff like that. And what I learned today is when you have everyone stand up and do the Pledge of Allegiance, make sure your meeting management guy is actually at the computer with the flag up there. So that's kind of funny if you think about it. So that being said, we're gonna hand it on over to Lena Kotke. <laughs> During our centennial year, we will be celebrating Boulder Rotary's past, present, and future. Sue Deans has been researching our club's history, and she will be providing us with stories from the first 100 years of Boulder Rotary. Marty shared a story of the club's founding at our last meeting in June, and over the course of this coming year, the history of our club will unfold week to week as Sue and Carol Griever and I share vignettes from the past 100 years. So this one comes from Boulder Rotarian Rep Replier, who in 1956 researched what the city of Boulder was like in 1919. And here's that snapshot. The First World War had ended on November 11th, 1918, just a few months before Boulder Rotary was founded. A few members had recently returned from service in the war, while others were still away and in uniform. A war tank was scheduled to visit Boulder, and the Rotary Club canceled its meeting that day. At the university, a modest collection of nondescript buildings atop the hill, the students and professors knew everyone else, at least by sight. The football team played regional schools on Gamble Field where bleacher seats accommodated 6,000 people. Pearl Street had been paved from 11th to 16th streets not long before. Before that, you had dust in the summer, frozen ruts in winter, and mud in spring. And as Marty told us, flies were a problem because of the horses that were up and down Pearl Street. The old courthouse, which burned in 1932, squatted solidly on the present courthouse site, 
with the Elks Club and the Physicians Building nearby. Also close was the Boulderado Hotel where Boulder, where Boulder Rotary held its meetings. All right. Thank you. And if, uh, we have some new member inductions. So if I could have um, Dick Golden and Eve Kilmer and Juliet Harrington come up with your sponsors. Last year we had 37 new members, and it is my pleasure that uh, I get to, in, uh, to induct our first ones here today. So we'll start off with Dick Golden, Rocky, and Darla. All right, thank you. Dick Golden, sponsored by Rocky Margolis. Where's Rocky? Thank you, Rocky. Thank you for your sponsorship. Was born and raised in New York and graduated from New York University. He's married to Terry, and between them, they have three children and four grandchildren. Dick has worked as a salesperson for IBM and Xerox, but also owned businesses. Notably, Dick bought a broken down ambulance company for $1. And he grew it over 12 years to become the largest ambulance service in Chicago and one of the largest in the country. Amazing. Impressive. When he and his wife lived in St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands, they bought Sassy Souvenirs, growing it to become the largest souvenir company in the Caribbean. Sounds like a trend here. Sassy Souvenirs worked with retailers on 12 islands throughout the Caribbean. Dick is a longtime Rotarian. He helped start a new Rotary Club in St. Thomas around 1992 and has been a member of the Coral Gables Rotary outside of Miami, Florida in Coral Gables. He's traveled to work on Rotary projects in India and Central America, and Dick loves humor and is learning to play the flute. Please join me in welcoming Dick to our Red Badge program and Boulder Rotary Club. Welcome, Dick. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Great. And Juliet? No? Well, it's my pleasure today to introduce Dr. Juliet Harrington to the club. <laughs> Juliet was born and raised in New Zealand. As a curious 19 year old, she traveled solo throughout Southeast Asia, China, and Tibet. A love of learning earned Juliet a business degree, a postgrad degree in psychology, and a PhD in archaeology and natural history, a Renaissance woman. The latter came from the uh, Australian National University. Somewhere be between degrees and raising children, she was awarded a patent on e commerce uh, for an online shopping cart that she successfully licensed and sold. Juliet's family immigrated to the United States about 15 years ago and are now all proud American citizens. <clears throat> Daughter Sophie became a U.S. presidential scholar and is close to completing a Ph.D. in England in plant science. Her son John has a scholarship studying mechanical engineering at Northeastern in Boston. Now comes the real renaissance part of it. Priest children, Juliet was an enthusiastic pilot and now as an empty nester enjoys racing her sports car. Juliet has volunteered at schools, mentoring youth at risk for five years and has been a board member of Zanta in Brisbane, Australia. She looks forward to getting to know all of you and I can say from personal experience, you'll enjoy getting to know her. Welcome, Juliet. Hey, Phil. Phil. Bill, I wanted to give you a gold star right there for bringing her in. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> All right, Jim. Hey, everybody. It's uh, my pleasure to introduce Eve Kilmer, who uh, I've sponsored and, and I've told you a bit about in snippets over the last months. But today we'll pull it together in, uh, in one little description 
However, it's a day of first as well because I'm going to read it from my phone, <laughs> which I don't think we get a lot of and I've never done before either. So uh, we had a printing glitch and uh, I'm sure it's the last one we'll ever have. But, but even I go back about eight or nine months, uh, shortly after I moved here, we became uh, acquainted and, and uh, have a mutual friend and or two or three and uh anyway it's uh her background uh, is one that uh, i think is going to be fresh and and welcome to the club um she comes from the medical side uh as having been raised in uh, a large family in arizona uh, tucson her father was a medical doctor and uh, eve attended brown university initially enrolling in their uh, pre-med and, and undergrad med school program, but once she realized the state of things that maybe were going to be a little different in healthcare than when her father was making uh, house calls and, and more uh, deeply connecting with his patients than she felt might be available to that profession today, she chose to go uh, another route. And so she has uh, become a clinical psychologist after finishing her work at Brown, she got a master's and a doctorate in, in California. So she uh, feels fortunate to do the work she loves and uh, has now been a clinical psychologist for 25 years and has been uh, named in recent Best of Boulder for a marriage therapist. So her private practice is thriving and, uh, and at, uh, is, as I said, I think going to be uh, a, a great addition to the club. So what makes her happiest are her close, trusting relationships that she holds with people. She also loves trying and experiencing new things. Her latest adventures, besides new places to hike and bicycle, are traveling. Just went to Peru with some friends, got scuba certified, joined Toastmasters, and likes to go dancing periodically when She's a new empty nester. Her daughter's at the Naval Academy, and her son is also attending school out of state, uh, working on a doctorate in quantum optics. <clears throat> so you see where this gene pool goes, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> although raising her children uh, has been a wonderful experience, Eve is now enjoying having the room in her life to more fully explore her passions, find new activities of interest, make new friends, and spend time with the friends and communities she cares about. And thus is particularly, uh, uh, she finds it particularly meaningful to give to others, and therefore wants to be a Rotarian. So. Hey, I got a gold star for you. You get a gold star too. Oh, we're going to get one now. There you go. Great. Uh, no, we don't have time right now. Thank you. Okay, here to uh, introduce our program is Dan Shear. What a joy that we live in Boulder where we can have this caliber of musician come and talk before us on a Friday, huh? Now, I... I definitely was uh, looking forward to this all week because I butchered Shahirazad <laughs> and I practiced it all week. And uh, just before the meeting, uh, Pam Hayek, who is a speech therapist, came up and gave me this how to say it. So she's going to be with me all year long. So I was so excited about that. Shahirazad. Shahirazad. So, um, Raffle, Raffle. We will go to birthdays while I find the raffle tickets, all right? You can come any time that you uh, want to on the, the any day. We're, we're going to have the birthday table open every day. You get a chance to say... Anything you want to say at your one time of the year? Uh, a lot of people ask me, what do you, what do you say? Well, we'd, I'd like to know who brought you in the club. Uh, you can tell about some odd job. James Bond one time said that he was a bouncer. 
uh, at a birthday table thing. Uh, you know, if you have something uh, about your pet, you can tell a story about a pet. I used to have a goldfish that could break dance on the carpet, but he only do it for about 20 seconds. Uh, so anyway, we want to uh, encourage everybody to sit at the birthday table. It's a big club. It's hard to get to know everybody. And if you stand up here and say your name, and uh, it, it will be a very good thing. So I'm going to start with Valerie here since she's right next to me, Valerie Lippitz. Hi. So you all know me as a doctor, but what you don't know is that I have a master's degree in animal behavior. And I studied coyotes and pronghorns in Grand Teton National Park for three years. Then I didn't really know what I wanted to do, and I ended up as the Boulder County Animal Control Officer for three years, working for the Sheriff's Department before I went to med school. So, a little, little change in my career. <laughs> Gordon Gam, it's birthday. You want to say some words, Gordon? No, I just. Uh, I just had major surgery a couple of weeks ago, so I really hadn't had a chance to to think of anything. But um, certainly glad to be vertical and still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Then we have uh, Bill Meyer. Former president. Well, I just uh, want to thank everybody. I don't have any words of wisdom, but I do have words of celebration. Uh, for my 70th birthday gift to myself, I took my six grandkids on a three-day, 36-mile canoe trip up in the backcountry of Yellowstone. <clears throat> and for all of you that are grandparents, you know what a gift that is. I'm, I'm just blessed. So anyway, I want to thank you for being part of this club and uh, allowing me to be part of it as well. Great. Hi. Most of you, or most of you know me. I'm Alexia Parks. You know me as the um, uh, founder of a Conscious Leadership Institute. Um, but many of you may not know that I also am a United Nations mentor who mentored a woman who became Goldman Sachs Fortune, most powerful woman in the world in 2014. So the information, I worked with her, she was lifting 200 young women out of the slums of Kampala, Uganda, by teaching them micro-entrepreneurship, mentorship, and leadership training. And so what I told her, I also told her to tell to her 200 young slum women, and, they, and she was successful. And I told her to say this, to, both to herself and to them, and it applies to everyone in this room, and especially the young uh, students who are off to do their trips around the world, and that is that you possess 10 powerful traits, and these 10 traits are exactly what's needed, actually urgently needed in the world today. So when you, when you think about them, when you study them, and when you focus on them and reflect on them, they will manifest as inner power, courage, and a will to express your full potential. So today in 2018, I, I'm turning, I have turned 75. And like you, I'm actually putting on my running shoes because to me, the most urgent thing that we have to do as young people and as our people turning 75 and older and between, all between is to recognize that we're at a watershed moment for humanity. And this is our marathon moment to learn how to be all we can be in every moment. Thank you. And Linda Nails. Um, yeah, this is my first time at the birthday table. Um, I'm a new, new Red Badge member. Uh, delighted to be a member of Boulder Rotary Club. Grateful to Michael Weatherwax, my longtime mentor and good friend, for being my sponsor. And I'm really excited about the um, broadness of opportunities to serve others and uh, soaking it all in right now we'll be choosing a few committees dan uh, on endowment and um just really excited about this opportunity i have a new puppy and it's good that i don't have to read anything today because i'm learning that she really loves to destroy all of my glasses 
And something else you uh, would not know is that I'm a really good bowler. So if anybody wants to take on um, a good uh, afternoon of bowling, let me know. Be sure and sit at the birthday table. Your contributions also help uh, furnish money for the resident scholars that are here today with us. Great, thank you, George. All right, take your raffle ticket out. Take your raffle ticket out. We've got a winner here. The winner is one, seven, five, nine, one, five. Who's got it? Okay, one, seven, five, nine, one, five. Who's got it? Who's got it? Marion, all right, great. We'll, we'll, come, we'll come to you afterwards, okay? Uh, PowerPoint and Hans, if you could come on up. You don't have a PowerPoint. Should I do Hans? Okay, 30 seconds. Here we go, Hans. Hey, real quickly, I uh, just want to announce uh, and thank you, Michael, for allowing us to do this. In two weeks, uh, we have a major event occurring across the street at the Avalon. want to make sure you're all there. We're inviting all the other Rotary clubs as well. As many of you know, we have an opiate crisis in our country. Over 100 people a day are dying from opiates. In the old days, it used to be from illegal drugs. Today, it's from prescription drugs. So one of the things we're doing that day is we're having a big Take Back Meds initiative. So it is your opportunity, because many of you and all of us usually have expired drugs, including narcotics, in our cabinets. We need to get those out of our cabinets, and we will be having the Sheriff's Department and the Public Health from County here to help, and it'll be very easy. You can take them all out of containers, so all the privacy, just put them in Ziploc bags or whatever bag, and we will dispose of those before the club meeting somewhere between 11.30 and 12.15. It's in the rib, read about it, and we'll also have a great panel to talk to you why we're doing this, because it's important that in the community we make this a community-wide effort. Thank you. Hello, Rotarians and guests, and welcome to the July 20th version of the PowerPoint for Boulder Rotary. We're celebrating 100 years, and Rotary made a difference last year, and we are going to be the inspiration this year. Crans to calculators. A few weeks back, wonderful Rotarians got together and collected school supplies for kids in need and packed them in backpacks. We want to give a special shout out to the chairs, George Browning, Don James, and Larry Johnson. Nice job, team. Wine to water, it's an amazing event, but this is why we do this for Rotary. Mmm. What do Tasty Cows and CU football games have in common? Well, nothing really, but you can bid on both via BRC's Summer Silent Auction. Both are being auctioned between July 20th and August 3rd. 
Ken Dubach raised the cow from just a pup, and Peter Ewing donated his seats to the games. All proceeds support the Boulder Rotary Club. Bidding sheets are on your table today, July 27th and August 3rd, or contact Joanna Kane. The winners will be announced on August 3rd. Enter and win. Men, next week's program on July 27th is Kevin Awaki presenting Web 3.0, Blockchain and the Internet of Money. Kevin believes strongly that the future of work is unbundled. The future of knowledge work will be driven by decentralization, community, and emergent collaboration, and in what he describes as a blockchain ecosystem. Don't miss it. And two weeks from today, on August 3rd, we're going to be across the street at the Avalon for Opioid Crisis in Boulder County. What can you do to help? And in cooperation with the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment, Boulder County Public Health, Boulder County Sheriff's Office, and the Colorado Consortium of Prescription Drug Abuse Prevention, we will also be staging a safe disposal medication take-back event so members can bring in their old, unneeded, and expired medication for safe disposal. Every great dream begins with a Rotarian. Always remember, you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars, to change the world, and to be the inspiration. Everybody now say it with us. Have, have a great, great weekend. weekend. Just want to end with some gratitude. Um, this whole year, I want to end the last minute or so with being thankful um, for the people who have helped us with this meeting today. Um, Rotarian of the Year, Michael Weatherwax, uh, District Attorney Michael Doherty, they were our past president greeter and uh, red badge greeter. Membership and guest registration were Jean and Pam and Sarah with the raffle. Um, this past week, week and a half, we had crayons to calculators and 45 Rotarians uh, were involved in that, 100 hours of volunteering, 400 uh, packs were donated, they were kind of unpacked and then repacked for 500 uh, kids to have their school supplies for this next year. So if you participated in that, could you please stand up right now and be recognized? Thank you, and of course, big special thank you to uh, Larry Johnson and George Browning as the chairs of that. So that being said, um, I was told coming in as president that you need to keep the meeting to 1.30, and it's a little after that. And they said that if you're after 1.30, you will get emails from members reminding you that it was after that. I've blocked all your emails. You don't know that, but in the last two minutes, I blocked all your emails. That being said, meeting adjourned.